Welcome to Fiduciary Trust Canada Update. Joining us today from Calgary is Tom Junkin, Senior Vice President, Personal Trust Services, Fiduciary Trust Canada. Tom will be discussing estate planning and why everybody needs an incapacity plan. Thanks for joining us today, Tom. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. The first thing people think about when planning their estate is a will. Are there any other considerations? In addition to planning for your eventual death, another thing that people need to think about is planning for the unfortunate event that they have an accident or they suffer an illness, which causes them to lose what we refer to as their capacity. And what is meant by the terms capacity and incapacity? From an estate planning perspective, we think about three different types of capacity. The first is testamentary capacity, which is the ability to make a legal will. It gives you wishes about what you would have happen to your property after you die. The second type of capacity is the capacity to make financial decisions on your own behalf, about your investments, about how your money is used for your benefit, how it's spent, etc. The third type of capacity is the capacity to make decisions about your own personal care or health care decisions, such as medical interventions that you will or will not accept. Incapacity refers to the loss or impairment of any of those types of capacity. You can lose capacity in a physical sense, so if you are unable to move or unable to communicate your wishes, you may be physically incapacitated. You can also become mentally incapacitated, which means that you lack the ability to understand or to communicate and make good decisions on your own behalf. In addition, incapacity may be temporary or in some cases it can be permanent. It happens rarely, but sometimes people lose their capacity very suddenly. This can happen either through an accident or through illness. We have things like early onset senility, for instance. But more often, of course, a loss of capacity happens gradually, over time. It's often associated with aging. And the unfortunate thing about a loss of capacity is that it often can go undetected for a period of time before anyone is aware that it has happened. So that's why it's so important that you think now about the worst case that might happen and that you might lose your capacity and take steps to plan for that. Tom, what can people do to prepare for incapacity? There are three steps that we would recommend virtually everyone take. The first step is, if you don't have a will, make one now. If unfortunately you should die without making a will, then your estate will probably not be distributed the way that you would like it to. In addition, if you don't have a will, you can't establish trust to protect young children or do other things that you may wish to do. It's a tragedy when you're still alive but you've lost the capacity to make a will because legally you can't do so. The second thing that everyone should do is to make a power of attorney. A power of attorney is a document that gives authority to someone to make financial decisions on your behalf. There are two types of powers of attorney. One is a general power of attorney. This is the type of document that you might sign at a bank or when you open a financial account. What you need to be careful about with a general power of attorney is you need to understand that if you lose your mental capacity, that power of attorney is no longer valid. So therefore, for estate planning purposes and capacity planning purposes, a more valuable document is what's known as an enduring power of attorney or a continuing power of attorney. This document is specifically designed to continue after you lose your mental capacity. With a continuing power of attorney, there's also two types you can have. You can have an immediate power of attorney, which grants authority to someone right after you sign the document. The second type of power of attorney is referred to as a springing power of attorney because it springs into action when it's needed. That type of document says that it's only valid when you have lost your capacity to make decisions. So with a power of attorney, you appoint someone to make financial decisions for you. And you can limit those decisions or you can make them completely unrestricted. But that person or people that you appoint in your power of attorney will act on your behalf to make your investments, to pay your bills, to pay your rent, uh, etc. The third document that everyone should have is generically referred to as a health care directive. Each province has a different name for this document but they all share things in common. With this document, you appoint someone to be your agent 
to make decisions for you about your health and your personal care if you're unable to make those decisions yourself. So those could be decisions about heroic medical interventions, you know, whether to accept certain medical uh, treatments or whether to withhold those treatments if there's no prospect of them providing any real relief to you. This person can also make decisions about where you live, with whom you associate, etc. Through this document you can appoint someone to make those important decisions if you can't make them yourself. And again, you can limit the decisions that they can make or you can give them virtually unrestricted authority. And are there any other recommendations you have for clients? In addition to those three steps that everyone should take, and let me just repeat those again. Make a will, make a power of attorney so someone can look after your financial affairs for you, and make a health care directive so someone can make personal care decisions for you. After those three, we have two other steps that many people will want to look into. The first would be making prearranged funeral plans. If you have strong feelings about your funeral, for instance, if you wish to be cremated or if you wish to be buried in a particular place, it's a good idea to make those wishes known to your family while you have the capacity to do so. In addition, it may be a good idea to put those plans in writing or even to see a funeral director to make formal decisions and some people will even prepay in advance for those arrangements. The advantage of prepayment is that you save your family the burden of trying to find the money at a time when it may be difficult to do so. But another advantage of doing that is it gives them a strong incentive to follow your wishes because you've already put them in writing and paid for them. A second more advanced consideration would be to think about whether an alter ego trust might play a part in your plans. This applies only if you're over age 60. But an alter ego trust is a special kind of trust we have in Canada where you can appoint a trustee to act in effect as your alter ego. One of the main reasons for creating an alter ego trust is to reduce the probate fees that may be payable on your estate when you die. But an additional use for an alter ego trust is to plan for your incapacity. You can set out plans ahead of time in this trust for how your money is to be used if you should lose your capacity. Of course, you will have to appoint a substitute trustee who will make decisions on your behalf, and this may avoid the need to make a power of attorney because all of your assets are in the trust and the trustee can make those decisions uh, on your behalf. Now, this is an advanced planning consideration. It probably is not worthwhile unless you have at least half a million to a million dollars to put into the trust, and it definitely requires good, competent legal advice before you do such a step. So those are five steps that everyone should consider uh, in terms of planning for their incapacity. And the time to plan for your incapacity is now. Don't put this off. Try to get it done soon. Thanks again for joining us, Tom. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. This has been another Fiduciary Trust Canada update.